Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. And it's been a little while since we made a video, but uh, we got some big news with BitMEX in a bit of trouble. You could kind of consider this a, oh boy, what did BitMEX do now sort of video. And if you don't really get that reference so much, uh, that's fine. But BitMEX has been sort of a, a plague in the crypto world, if I may say so. Uh, BitMEX is easily the first, maybe the second largest crypto exchange by volume, and mostly because of their 100x leverage rate, which has been sort of legendary in the crypto world for a long time. And I always told my viewers, whether it be a live stream or in a video or something like that, that I, I don't really recommend leverage trading. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think you should do leverage trading. It just means leverage trading. It just means that uh, I don't think you should do leverage trading, recommended anyway. Uh, I, I don't want to tell people, yeah, go on this exchange and slap 100x on there and you'll be just fine because most people, quite frankly, get wrecked. Also, BitMEX is pretty notorious for, again, uh, wrecking people with with the leverage uh so whenever you uh, go onto forums reddits etc and you see 160 million people wrecked by shorts or longs etc when Bitcoin goes down or up in price, there's always some meme that comes along with 160 plus or 200 million dollars in wrecked leverage trades and uh, another thing that BitMEX has been sort of at least uh, uh, alleged uh, sort of operating with a conspiracy sort of mindset that um, whenever uh, big shorts or or longs come along and get wrecked, that it was actually BitMEX doing that. And it kind of makes sense. It's a bit of a tinfoil hat sort of conspiracy type deal, but it really actually kind of makes sense because well, let's say that the majority of people think that Bitcoin is going to go up. So of course, everybody is longing and very few people are shorting. And it comes to find that usually it ends up falling when everybody longs too much. And when everybody shorts too much, it ends up going up in price. And it wouldn't be too hard for BitMEX to either use some kind of puppet accounts or their main account or whatever accounts uh, to just simply pump up the price of Bitcoin with their own Bitcoin or dump the price of Bitcoin uh, with, with their Bitcoin or with their money, etc., cetera, and actually uh, wreck all of those longs. So if there's a ton of longs built up and they just dump the price just a little bit and they wreck all those, they get the fees for them. So BitMEX has been pretty notorious in the crypto world. So the CFTC charges BitMEX with illegally operating derivatives exchange. So they're in some pretty hot water here, even though they don't operate in the United States. So the United States getting them again, right? The SEC and et cetera, going after people that um, from completely different parts of the world. So the uh, CFTC has charged derivatives exchange BitMEX with operating an unregistered trading platform and violating anti-money laundering regulations. Not too surprising there. According to a statement released Thursday, the CFTC filed a civil enforcement action in the Southern District of New York. Of course, it's always the state of New York. The state of New York is like the strictest in gun laws and uh, monetary regulations in pretty much the entire United States. So that's not surprising at all. Again, against five entities and three individuals who allegedly own and operate the exchange. The individuals charged, of course, include Arthur Hayes, publicly known as the CEO of BitMEX, as well as Ben Dello and Samuel Reed. The CFTC alleges that these individuals are owners and operators of BitMEX through a maze of corporate entities. Again, not surprising at all. The aforementioned corporate entities, which are also cited as defendants in the case, are HDR Global Trading Limited, 100X Holding Limited, notice that 100X there, ABS Global Trading Limited, Shine Effort Incorporated Limited, and HDR Global Services Bermuda Limited BitMEX. That's, uh, they sort of get longer as they go on. The CFTC seeks disgorgement or restitution of all ill-gotten gains, civil monetary penalties, permanent trading bans, and injunctions against future violations. I would suspect that if Arthur Hayes was in the United States, he would be under arrest by now. The commission believes that BitMEX has illegally offered leverage trading services to retail traders to the tune of $1 trillion in notion, and notional value. 
since its inception in 2014. Despite its success, the CFTC believes that the exchange failed to take the most basic compliance procedures. <laughs> you think uh, the, the unbelievable amount of people who get wrecked on BitMEX on a weekly basis whenever the price of Bitcoin moves, uh, just, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars lost in uh, to whoever ever was longing or shorting. And that's, uh, you know, millions of dollars worth of fees to BitMEX every time. So again, they sort of have a they sort of have an incentive uh, to actually uh, wreck who, whatever is the most long at the time, whether it's longs uh, or shorts are big and everybody is betting on short or, or long, etc. Uh, they sort of have an incentive to wreck those people, at least the majority. In addition to civil charges, the U.S. attorney for the District of New York indicted uh, Hayes, Dello, Reed, Gregory Dwyer, uh, BitMEX's head of business development for violating and uh, conspiring to violate the Bank Secrecy Act. If convicted, the executives could face a maximum of five years in prison and a $250,000 fine, which seems very, very low for $1 trillion since 2014. But isn't that the way it always goes? A statement from the Department of Justice reveals that Reed, BitMEX's chief technology officer, was arrested on Thursday morning in Massachusetts. So one of them indeed was. Hayes, Dello, and Dwyer remain at large. Reports surfaced as early as July 2019 that the CFTC was investigating the exchange in large part due to the speculation that U.S. residents were able to, to use the platform despite a formal ban. So you're not supposed to use BitMEX if you're in the U.S., but, uh, well, everybody really does. Uh, but moving on from that. So BitMEX, if you if you are on BitMEX right now, uh, it, you know, one of, the, one of these deals, eh, might want to get your crypto off that. I don't know. Uh, that's just a little bit of, that's a little bit of advice there. Just a little warning. BitMEX denies CFTC and Department of Justice allegations. Says the trading will continue. Now, just because the U.S. is, you know, uh, putting v these, these allegations and violations, etc. onto BitMEX does not mean that they're going to shut down. However, I have read some FUD that it may. I, I sort of doubt it, but um, um, it's one of those deals where better safe than sorry, I suppose. In a blog post published Thursday afternoon, BitMEX lashed out at charges against the Commodities Future Trading Commission and Department of Justice filed against the exchange. BitMEX's statement claimed that from our early days as a startup, we have always sought to comply with applicable U.S. laws as laws were understood at the time and based on available guidance, even though they don't operate in the United States. What exactly applicable U.S. laws are will always uh, likely be central to the case. BitMEX has long maintained that it does not serve customers in the U.S., though others before the CFTC and DOJ have argued that that is a lie. And I don't know, that that is sort of a strange um, statement there, that they don't operate in the United States, uh, which is true. I think if you go to the to the BitMEX website, if you try to sign up as a U.S. citizen, you can't. So I don't know if that is actually a lie or not. The CFTC's case rests on BitMEX's failure to register with the commission as a derivative exchange in the U.S. Now, one could get a a VPN or something like that and connect to BitMEX, but you're going to need probably some kind of KYC. I'm actually not particularly well versed with BitMEX, although everybody knows about BitMEX. The DOJ, on the other hand, argues that BitMEX deliberately failed to implement effective know your customer and anti-money laundering programs in violation of the Bank Secrecy Act. Both agencies assert that BitMEX had years of warning that their operations were illegal. And that probably goes with a ton of different uh, exchanges out there. Not not just BitMEX, uh, but I'm really not surprised that this is coming down on BitMEX as the 100x leverage trading for anybody that just basically signs up to the website and connects to it. Uh, their KYC is pretty lax, so I would imagine you probably could connect with a VPN and just make some screw off account and go on to BitMEX, as many people do. Um, but it's really not surprising the U.S. is coming down on them like this, but uh, it, it's a matter of it, are they actually going to be able to do anything about it. However, because of this FUD, open interest on BitMEX dropped 16%. Investors withdraw 37,000 Bitcoin in less than 24 hours, which I don't think is a bad idea at all. If I had Bitcoin on BitMEX at the moment, I would probably remove it. Personally, I would. Uh, I don't mean to tell everybody to remove it and FUD against this thing, sort of thing. I'm just the messenger here. But 
Eh, that's my own opinion. Data from Arcane Research shows that open interest on BitMEX's Bitcoin derivatives market touched a new low of 45,122 BTC on October 21st. Uh, so according to Arcane Research's post on Twitter, the former yearly low was painted on, on the 30th of April when the open interest bottomed at 61,975 BTC. The post adds that in the wake of the act CFTC, traders are definitely closing their positions on BitMEX. Oh my god, the open position. Wow, wow, wow. In just a couple days. Open interest is the total number of outstanding derivatives contracts, such as options or futures, that have not been settled. Increasing open interest represents new or additional money coming into the market, while decreasing open interest indicates money flowing out of the market. Meanwhile, Coinmetrics data shows that the during that same period, a total of 37000 was moved out of BitMEX as investors panicked sought to secure their funds. In a comment on Twitter, Coin Market, Coin Metrics uh, adds that Binance and Gemini together captured over one third of the BitMEX withdrawals. So good old Binance, Gemini, uh, profited and often all, all this FUD. But um, that's about it. The uh, uh, It continues on uh, just a little bit more, but uh, not too pertinent information. Just the fact that 37,000 BTC is effectively flowing out, or at least um, not being repurchased. So these are just open contracts, essentially. And when their shorts and longs, etc., are all done and, and they, they cease their contract, uh, this is essentially going down. It's not necessarily that they withdrew, although it's pretty clear that a lot of it is going to Binance and Gemini, uh, but they're certainly not reinvesting uh, into BitMEX right now. And um, that's definitely not good for BitMEX. Not at all. Probably good for the average traders, less people to get wrecked with 100 X leverage. And the problem with leverage, see, I don't really have a problem so much with leverage. I only have a problem with myself telling people, yeah, you should go do leverage. I don't think that's a good idea to tell people. Um, I think there's sort of a level of responsibility if you're going to make some kind of video on, on cryptocurrency or any kind of finance, you probably shouldn't encourage people to use 100x leverage. And again, another problem with the crypto market, as I was saying, was that you never know when Bitcoin is going to go up or down. Um, whereas the stock market, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more uh, readable in the sense, okay, like I, you know, a new iPhone is coming out, or new, or new this, or new technology, or Google's doing this and it's going to raise its stock, or Tesla's coming out and doing this and it's going to raise the stock. At least that is somewhat more readable and a little bit more definable, whereas Bitcoin is going up in price because, I don't know, people are buying it, right? And why are they buying it right now? I don't know. Nobody knows, right? Or a whale comes along, uh, buys millions upon millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, pumps up the price of Bitcoin by five, six hundred dollars. Everybody else jumps on board. They see the price coming up. It goes up another five, six hundred. And then a week later, that same whale dumps it by uh, the equivalent five or six hundred dollars that they actually pumped it on. And so they made a bunch and they wrecked everybody in the process. And there was no way uh, to know that that was going to happen. So that's the problem with leverage is that you're just you're. you're it might as well just be a guess like oh yeah i'm just gonna hit the button you know what i mean Whoa. and you're you're just guessing is it going to go up is it going to go down um you, you know one could argue that with the stock market or many other different markets but at least uh, they're tied to something that you can read about whereas bitcoin is a whale gonna come along and buy or sell yeah you don't know it could be any day coin market cap uh bitcoin again uh just goes to show uh, check it out. In the last seven days, Bitcoin went down uh, quite a bit here. So 10,546 Bitcoin. Now, uh, clicking on Bitcoin if it feels like working. Um, and I, I don't think I really like the new uh, the new coin market cap setup. I, I, I never really like new things like that. You know, on a website that you've used for a long time and it changes the interface or something like that. And, I don't like it. Uh, 10,900 Bitcoin to all of a sudden you see this line right here. This happened in, in a matter of an hour or two, probably a whale selling and then everybody else panic selling off. And this is exactly what happens in the market. So we're at 10,900 and all of a sudden, oh my God, no, we're not. We're at 10,000, like 400. Um, so it just happens immediately. Another big sell off. And so could 
you have been longing right there and go, oh yeah, it's just going to pop right back up. Uh, you just don't know. And that's the problem with leverage trading. I, I feel like um, if you want to trade <clears throat> either day trading itself and, you know, making uh, multiple trades per day, or at least just swing trading, you know, picking Bitcoin up at 10,000, if it goes to 11,500, sell it, pick it back up at 10,000 sort of deal. And those are weeks at a time. Uh, those trades can be made. I feel like that's a, that's a much safer bet to do. And if, and if you buy in and it goes down, just sit and hold for a little while, at least you're not getting leverage wrecked in that sense. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, social media and in the description below, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the video, all that good YouTuber stuff. But as usual, I'll see you guys next time.